Thank you, Graham. Good morning, everyone. I'm very happy to be with you guys today and very happy to see everyone uh, that has joined. Um, today, we're going to be having a very wonderful session, um, and we have uh, nobody else than Mr. David Parrish, uh, who will be taking us on the heart of virtual pitching. I'm very sure you'll all be interested to know, uh, looking at what's going on right now with the pandemic, uh, so we're trying to bring virtual pitching and give you tips on knowledge on how to pitch right. Okay, so we have Mr. David um, we'd like to know who Mr. David is. So Mr. David Parrish is, um, David is, a, is a creative industry keynote speaker, business advisor, a trainer as well, a consultant and on, an author. Uh, creative, he has, he has um, experience in creative industry. Uh, he's an expert, a specialist um, business advisor for creative businesses and also cultural industry and organizations. He's a creative industry management consultant and expert on the management of business and organizations in the creative and digital industries. So please, if you guys can uh, help me welcome Mr. David, you can put on the chat box um, and welcome him um, because he's gonna give us a brilliant uh, session which we're all looking forward to. So Mr. David Parrish, please welcome, welcome to the, welcome on board. Thank you very much for, for, for taking this um, opportunity uh, to enlighten us with, the, with your knowledge. Thank you very much and welcome. Well, thank you very much for the, the kind introduction. And I'm absolutely delighted to be here with you today to, um, to share with you some uh, top tips for virtual pitching um, in this seminar called The Art of Virtual Pitching. Um, I would like to thank very much uh, the Enterprise Center, Enterprise Development Center and GEN Nigeria for being the hosts and for inviting me and for doing all the work behind the scenes to make this uh, webinar happen. So thank you very much for your excellent and professional organization. Um, I've seen many pitches um, and delivered many actually, but I've seen them from the point of view of a competition judge, uh, an investor panel, maybe a, a panel uh, of a grant making body, and as well um, as a panel for interviewing people as a recruitment for jobs in my companies. So um, I've seen many, many, many pitches. Um, I'm going to try to give you some tips about what are the big mistakes to avoid and some good practices that we can um, all adopt and embed into our pitches to create winning pitches. Now, <clears throat> this webinar is going to be in two sections. First, I'm going to give you some general advice about pitching in all circumstances and I have 10 points to make there. Um, these apply, of course, to virtual uh, pitching as well, but they are general. And then we will take some questions. Uh, I'll, I'll try and answer some questions and we can have comments. And by the way, you can ask your questions as we go along. Um, so put them in the chat box, they will be moderated. And at the end of the first section, I'll answer some questions. And then the second section, is specifically uh, tips about pitching and virtually. So some special um, aspects, some special techniques and considerations that we need to take into account when we're pitching in a virtual environment. So that's the outline and uh, here we go. Let's, um, let's start with number one. And the first one is different audiences, different pitches. Now, the point here is that we shouldn't just have a standard pitch on our presentation slides and use it for everybody because clearly different audiences um, will require different pitches because they have different perspectives, they need to know different things about our business. So when I say audiences, I'm talking about, on the one hand, uh, equity investors, um, it might be a, a panel of judges, for something like Creative Business Cup Nigeria. Um, it might be um, some grant making body uh, that is the audience, or um, it might be actually a business that you're pitching to, to try and win a contract. So all of these things apply, all of these are different audiences and we need to be specific. Um, so we need to understand actually, what are the needs of the audience? What does that audience need to know? An investor, of course, will need to know what is their return on investment and when, what's the exit strategy. Whereas judges will want to know, you know, it, if they give you the prize, are they gonna be embarrassed if you fail? So are you a worthy prize winner? 
And similarly, for a contract, the business that you're pitching to needs to know whether you can deliver the job, what your ideas are, but also whether they can work with you if the price is right and they trust you. So slightly different aspects for each different audience. And to do that, we need to research the audience. We need to understand what the funders requirements are. If you have to be set up as an organization in a certain way or have a certain market or a certain product, make sure you can tick the boxes or shall we say, allow them to tick the boxes. Um, so you have to anticipate what their, their checklist is and make sure that your pitch addresses all of the points on their checklist. So for each audience, imagine their checklist and make sure your pitch um, addresses each one. Second point is what's in it for me. And what I say uh, in my book and elsewhere is that actually nobody cares about you. Nobody cares about your business. Don't assume that they do. What they are interested in is what's in it for me. A customer wants to know what's in it for them. A funder, an equity investor, a panel judge, they want to know what's in it for them. Maybe call them selfish, maybe call them self-interested, but they are, and we need to address their self-interest. We need to understand what's in it for them. And if some aspects of your pitch leave them thinking or asking, so what? Then it's irrelevant to their needs. So you might want to talk about the processes you use, the materials you use. You might want to talk about your background, your hobbies, when the company was set up and where the offices are. But if these things are not relevant, they will say, so what? And what I call the, the so what test links into the marketing principles of features and benefits. The point is, we talk about features of a product or a project, but the customer wants to know what is the benefit I don't need to know the engine capacity of a car. I want to know if it goes fast or if it's economical. I don't want to know how many people are involved in your project. I just want to know if you can deliver on time, etc. So let's turn things around and look at things from the customer point of view, which is central to any kind of marketing, including giving a winning pitch. So look at things from the customer's point of view, tell them what they need to hear, not what you want to say about yourself or your business or your product. You are the solution. Sometimes we think we have a problem. Maybe we do. We have a problem because we need equity investment. We have a problem. We need to win a prize. We have a problem. We need to win a contract. Yes, we have a problem, but let's not put ourselves into a, a mode or a way of thinking where we are begging, where we are the victim. Because actually, we can turn this round. Actually, the audience has a problem. A grant-making body needs to make grants. Otherwise, they will lose their money. They are desperate to find projects to invest in. Um, a venture capital fund needs to make investments. If they just sit on their money for years, they don't get a return on capital. So they need to find investments. They have a problem and you can be the solution to that problem. So let's think in that way more positively and let's help them to realize that we are the solution to their problem, whether it's needing an employee, uh, a supplier, um, a grant uh, recipient or an award winner. We are the solution. So let's talk in that way. Be your authentic self. I talk about marketing and authentic marketing as working with people who like your authentic self, working with markets and customers with whom you can be your authentic self. Because then you are on the same wavelength. Then you are more natural and you come across as more honest and straightforward. On the other hand, if you feel that you have to behave differently or wear different clothing or speak in a certain manner, um, in other words, to pretend to be something different, it's not gonna work for you 
and it's not going to work for the audience because somehow people can smell or somehow tell if you're not being authentic. They, they just get a funny feeling, like if somebody's telling lies or avoiding eye contact. We don't know quite how we pick up these things, but we, we really have to, but we, we do, and we need to be aware of this. So, you know, we need to act and be our authentic selves, speak in our own tone of voice, use our own vocabulary, etc. cetera. Um, and also because the panel, the audience is investing in people. They're not investing in an abstract entity called a company. Yeah, of course they are in a technical sense, that's where the money goes. But they're looking for partners, suppliers, prize winners and companies and startups that are run by good people. So they need to establish a rapport with you. They need to trust you. It's all about people. Business is between people, not between corporations, companies, or brands. So show yourself, be yourself. If they don't like you, well, it's not gonna work anyway. But if they do like you, it'll work really well. What problem are you solving? It's always a good, way to think about any business starting any business is to say find a problem and solve it if there's no problem we're not going to be able to sell our solution so find a problem and solve it and this is how the panel the audience will be thinking what problem are you solving i can see that you you're really excited um, in your presentation about your business you're really keen about this new product or service but again, what's in it for me? What's the point? What problem are you solving? And of course, they're asking, for whom are you solving that problem? In other words, who is your market? Who's going to buy this thing? So what's the problem that the market has, the customer has, and how are you going to solve it? So there needs to be clearly a demonstration of the market. And I think also that there's going to be competition. And the panel, the judges, etc. they're gonna ask you, who's your competitors? And often there are, usually there are, even if there are not obvious direct competitors, there might be indirect competitors, there might be an alternative product or service. Uh, there might be another way for people to spend their disposable income. So be aware of competition, don't say that there isn't any, and more than that, talk about the competition and how you can outmaneuver them using your competitive advantage, your USP. How come you're gonna succeed in the market when others are trying already or will emerge and try as new entrants to the market? Share your why. This is about telling people not only what you are doing, but why you are doing it. It's about your story in the sense of your passion, they don't want to know the story of all your life, um, of your hobbies and where you went to school and all the rest of it, even though we might like to talk about those things. But they do want to know what is driving you to do this. And very often it's connected to a personal story, um, an experience uh, for that person themselves or their family. And this indicates your, the drive that you have. It, clicks into place, they then start to get you. They know why you're spending all this time on this product, service, or project, and why you're pitching and why you need their help. And again, it helps to establish rapport. Oh, okay. But really, it's about, um, about <laughs> selling your why. Because ultimately, customers don't want to, um, they don't want to know what you're doing, they want to know why you're doing it. And this is the, the golden circle uh, approach that Simon Sinek talks about so well. And I'll put a link to that TED talk in, in my webpage, which you'll get a link to afterwards. There's lots more information there. Ideas are not enough. The multimillionaire Felix Dennis, uh, the late Felix Dennis said, ideas are not enough. It's the correct execution of the ideas that's crucial. So lots of us have ideas for businesses or products. You know, we think them up, especially if we're having a drink or two or we're in a good mood. But 
that's not enough. We need to put them into a business system and correctly execute them to make it into a real business, not just an idea. In other words, we need a, a business plan, a revenue plan. We need to a system for making money from our product. And that's what the audience will want to know if you're pitching for an investment or a, a business prize. So what's your revenue model? How will your great idea, your passionate project actually deliver money? We need to be clear about the business model and succinctly uh, communicate it. Rehearse your pitch. It goes without saying that you should rehearse your pitch, but more than that, we can, we can write it, we can outline it, we can be very clear about the key points we want to make, but we need to rehearse it verbally. We need to actually say it out loud so that the words become embedded and flow naturally from our tongues. And if something you've written doesn't sound correct or just doesn't sound right somehow uh, as you speak it, then learn to speak it in a natural way. So it's about rehearsing in terms of the, uh, the content, but also speaking out loud. Um, I think the other point is that, um, yes, you can speak to bullet points. Um, you don't have to memorize the whole speech or a script. You can use bullet points, but I think it's a good idea actually to memorize the opening bit so that you get off to a good start. So you're not stumbling or changing your words in that first opening sentence or two so that that comes across clearly and smoothly because it gives you more confidence. And then the end bit, the final words, you know, memorize your final sentence or two so that again, it's, it comes out correctly, strongly and confidently because it's the beginning and the end that make the most impression. Um, and crucially, rehearse the timings. If you have four minutes or 10 minutes or whatever number of minutes to make your pitch, make sure your pitch fits in. It's just so cringing and unprofessional when people have to be told to shut up uh, and they, or they rush through the final slides or they don't get a chance to say their final point. So please don't make that mistake. And when you're rehearsing, rehearse the timings. Does everything I wanna say fit into the, the number of minutes I'm allowed? And remember that it also takes usually a bit longer in practice uh, in other words, in reality, in front of the audience, than it does when you're practicing at home, speaking to yourself in a mirror. So allow more time so that you're not getting anxious about speeding up at the end because you've got a few more points to make and it all ends up in a, a quick rush and goodbye. Not good. So leave some time. If you've got a 10 minute pitch, time it for nine minutes. It's okay to finish early, but it's just not good if you overrun and end with an impact think about your ending what is the ending is it a call to action is it a final point is it a, a strap line or slogan from your business you know what are you want what do you want to finish with you want to go out with a bang make an impression so that it's a memorable um, pitch and they will remember not only the content but especially the end that's the clincher so think very carefully about that craft it and deliver it well. And then final point in this section about pitching in general is about providing further information. Now in a, a physical pitch, a non-virtual pitch, you probably have copies of your business plan to hand out there and then to the, the investors or the, the, uh, the judges or whatever. Um, that, can we? So um, we, we somehow need to know where we need to be able to tell people where they go for more information. In other words, at the end of your pitch, say more information is available in your email inbox. We've already sent it. It will come to you in two minutes or you can go to a particular web page or link to find the information you need and download it. So think about all that extra documentation information that you want to supply. Um, in connection with the pitch, but you can't do actually during the pitch. So I'll pause at this point because I've made the 10 points about pitching in general. And, uh, and I'm interested to know any questions.
so I'm looking forward to your, your questions um, and any comments you have, and I will do my best to answer them.